Hi guys, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. And today we are doing part two of part one video I did a couple weeks ago. The part one was 12 things, 12 things, oh my gosh, 12 things I wish I knew when I first started painting. And this video is a follow up, um, yeah. Eight things I wish I didn't know about watercolor painting. Basically, these rules with watercolor and how to break them. And the reason I say I wish I didn't know them is just because they are good for learning, but when we know the rules, sometimes, at least when it comes to art, we find that it stresses us out and it makes us feel guilty when we don't follow the rules. I want your watercolor journey to be a beautiful thing, not a stressed out one. I wanna teach those to you today. Let's go talk about it. I don't know what a bird sounds happening right now. Interesting. Rule number one is don't have pencil lines in your compositions. So when I was starting off in the world of social media and art, I was doing a lot of live streams on TikTok and I would always sketch out my composition before I would start painting and I'd get the question most of the time, what? The question I would get most of the time was, what do you do with all those pencil lines? And I always said, don't worry about them. And I started to get the impression that somehow having those lines there to people bent, your painting was incomplete or messy or it wasn't up to par. And there's a mixed media thing too we'll talk about soon, but maybe it has something to do with that, mixing different medias together and how people like to keep them separate. So you can do a few things. You can sketch lightly if you want to have that sketch before you paint. You can erase some of your sketch after just so it's really, really light and you won't see it through because when you put that paint down, it's really almost impossible to erase that up through the paint. Um, you can also use a friction pen. I do have one, not at my hand's reach, just like so. It looks like a regular pen, but when you write everything, you can write, you can sketch, and then you hit it up with a heat gun or a hairdryer, those lines disappear. So those are some cool options if you don't like pencil lines. But honestly, those lines don't bother me and I also incorporate them into the design of what I'm painting. It gives you borders. So if you have a nice drawing, if you feel like your drawing is pretty good, you're gonna have a really good painting. And if your drawing is a bit shaky and you're following that with your painting, your final composition might not be as what you'd like it to be. Just like with anything in art, drawing is a practice, it's a journey, it takes a while to get there. So you can even go further with your lines. You can use a charcoal pencil, which is pretty fun. And that can really define some nice, thick, dark borders and then paint over the top. I have a video that I did with some florals in a jar with charcoal if you guys want to check it out. The link is in the description below. So just be creative and allow yourself to have those lines and see how liberating it can be to not worry. So the second rule would be to not rotate your paper. So for example, I've got my paper here, my notes, and you know, what is rotating? Obviously doing this whole situation, right? The ideal is that you should be able to paint all the upside down elements, florals, whatever it is from all uh, all the angles you need from just keeping your paper straight up like this. And I think that there is validity to that because you can develop some really good professional skills. But this idea that you should paint everything from that one perspective of your paper, um, it does develop skills, but it also creates more anxiety and frustration of like, this is another thing that I have to do. And when we get to art, something that is freeing and expressive and beautiful and flowing and fluid, when we get to that and then we have these rigid rules, we get to a point where that beauty and the flow of the art starts to get more stagnant and stuck. If in our brain we're thinking that we have to follow these rules every time. There is definitely a learning curve when it comes to trying to paint all the things from one angle of your paper, but it's something that you can practice maybe on a low pressure piece so that you can start to develop those skills if that is important to you. So the third rule I wish I didn't know was to only paint on 100% cotton paper. So I hear this from artists all the time, and although it is valid that 100% 
cotton paper versus the cheap uh, pulp paper, it definitely does hold water better. It definitely creates a lot more of an interesting um, absorption. It absorbs the, the paint better as well. Uh, you're not gonna get all of that pilling, for example, if you're trying to paint something and then you wanna lift some color where you take a damp paintbrush that is clean and you just start to scrub on there. It, with that cheap paper, you're often gonna see little bits of the pilling of that paper and it's going to destroy your painting if you keep scrubbing on that. With a professional cotton paper, you can scrub it, but you can treat it harshly and roughly and it's going to hold up to the water and the scrubbing and all of that. And you also might get some weird blooms, like if you put more water over paint that you would put down, it's gonna kind of bloom out weird and the bleeds might not. Uh, blend together as nicely. So there is a reason why 100% uh, cotton paper is really important. However, if you are sitting there and you have a piece of paper that cost you $5 or $2 or $10 or whatever it is, depending on how large your paper is, right? How nervous are you going to feel with that expensive piece of paper putting down your first brush strokes, knowing that you might mess up especially feeling that anxiety that you might mess up. And then, you know, when you feel that way and your narrative in your head is I will mess up, you're more likely to mess up. And then that piece of paper, you're gonna feel like just throwing it away, but it's gonna feel like such a loss. I want you to sit down with whatever cheap paper you have, especially if you're beginning. You need to be able to make mistakes. You need to be able to learn from them. How can I fix them? If I can't fix them, what can I use this for later? So here is an option I'd like to recommend for practice. I picked this up at Walmart. At the time, it was $11 for 50 sheets of paper, which is really, really amazing. And I've used this just to kind of practice on. And if you'd like to watch a video on where I painted on some really nice paper as well as some crappy paper, just to give you ideas of what you can use to practice, especially if you have a low budget, a small budget, which is what I had when I first started out, click the link in the description of the video. Videos, yes, for that video. Okay, so number four would be to don't mix media. This is a rule that I feel like you should break all the time. Because I hear a lot of times, for example, in the watercolor community, people just like to use watercolor and that's it. And honestly, I mostly use watercolor myself. That is my preferred medium. What I've been practicing on, I'm also trying to learn some gouache and on my Patreon account, I've been posting, um, trying to post a monthly video on a small gouache tutorial. It helps keep me accountable to my practice and maybe encouraging some other usage of medium. But you could use wash over watercolor. You can mix those together. I also like to use charcoal pencils, pencil lines, as you know, some nice black pens for outlining ink and wash. But the point is that we should be able to be free to utilize all that medium. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in comments what your thought is on that because there's a lot of purists out there that feel like if you're doing watercolor, you should just keep it at that. For example, at art shows, if it's a watercolor art show, you would be disqualified if you used any other medium mixing it in because that's, and that's fine. That's a professional competition. Competition, do they call it that? I don't know. It's totally a competition in my opinion. Utilize the supplies that make you feel like you are making the most beautiful creation that you can. You're adding texture. You're adding different perspectives, different types of color, different types of, of opacity as well, because watercolor, of course, we can make it opaque. We can make it really thin. Oh, pastels, that's also another one. Crayons, just try it. Do you have any art supplies that your kids have? Grab them. Sometimes you find that your art style might be a little different than you had been going in the direction you'd been going because you start to experiment and you just let yourself, let yourself go. Not in a bad way. That's usually a bad term. But you let yourself go at it and just try to create things that made you happy. So the fifth rule in watercolor is that you must paint from light to dark. With other mediums, you can go light, you can go dark, especially with acrylic, for example, and wash because of the opacity. They're not transparent. And so you can go light and then dark and dark and light and whatever you'd like. You can easily go over it and cover it up and start over, but with watercolor, it's harder to do that. There are ways to go lighter if you have gone too dark in your painting and you want to lighten it a little bit. You can take that clean paintbrush, uh, make sure that it's a little bit damp and then you can start to scrub as I'm showing you right here and that color is going to slowly start to lift if the color is dry already 
It's gonna take a lot more scrubbing. And this is where that really nice high quality paper comes in because it's going to tolerate that scrubbing a lot more than a cheaper paper. But even with a pulp paper, you can still lift in some ways. So that's one way to achieve a lighter uh, color. And sometimes you can even lift all the color depending on if it's a high staining color or not. You can always use gouache as well. You're going to be able to add in a highlight. It won't always look as natural as maybe leaving the white space of the paper white, but it is a tool in your tool bag that you can utilize when you need to go lighter with colors. Um, so, but the other thing is, what if, how do you deal with a situation where you need dark already? So there's a piece of the painting, maybe the center of a flower. This is where the rule really needs to be thrown out. And it's probably a silly thing to say, but it might need to be said. Since that rule says you have to go light and then you build up your layers because as you add a layer, it starts to darken over that first layer. But if you need dark, like for example, the center of a flower, or maybe some darker petals, just go dark. No need to start layering and layering to build up that dark color. Just dip it in that saturated paint, very little water, a lot of pigment, and put down those brush strokes that you need. That's it, simply it. Okay, so the sixth rule that I wish I didn't know is that when you mix a color, you should mix up enough of it for your whole painting. So the idea behind this is simply that, say you're painting red roses and you are going to make 10 roses in your composition. So you need to have enough paint to be able to make sure you can cover all those roses, right? Because what if you ran out in the middle of those roses and you needed to make another one? Let, and, and if you're just using red straight up from whatever tube you're doing, that's fine. But if you're mixing a certain color and you need it to be a certain shade or hue, then doing enough of it will keep you from having a poor color match if you have to do another mix of it, because it's really hard to get the exact same color when you're mixing things together. So here's the alternative. What if it doesn't matter if the shade, if the color is off a little bit? What if it's okay? What if it adds a variation to your painting? When we put these parameters on there and we say we have to always follow them and focus on them, sometimes it can be a nightmare in terms of being creative. So again, if your color is off, don't worry about it. Just remind yourself it's just a variation in the painting and it's something to create more interest and value. Okay, so the seventh the seventh uh, rule is that when you're trying to paint loose, don't sketch. And the idea with that is that those lines that you put down can kind of box you in and keep you from painting outside of the lines, outside of the box, that you should go directly in with that color uh, and not put that sketch in because it's going to define too much what you are doing. So I would say with that, you don't have to do a full sketch. And what's the reason for sketching? First of all, I love drawing. I've been really getting into it in like the last six months uh, because I'm noticing the better my drawing skills are, the better my compositions. And I don't always draw, but it's creating this learning experience in my brain that's helping me to feel more confident, especially with florals and all the details that they have, being able to put down uh, that floral on paper with a pencil, sketch it in or with a pen, and then watercolor paint over the top of that is really satisfying. And it's just a different way of painting. So when you do a light sketch, you don't have to do all the details. It's not like we're doing, you know, paint by numbers people. It's not like we're doing a coloring book where now we're gonna just paint all of this in exactly around the lines and don't go outside the lines. And you can go outside the lines, by the way, it's okay. Give you permission. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it can give you a confidence that you might not have, especially if you're starting out. You can just put in the basic shapes. Okay, circles here, this is where my florals will go. Some lines here for where my stems will go. Or maybe, um, you know, some tree trunks or some little outlines where my clouds will go. And it's gonna help you know that your composition is solid. It'll keep you in the space where you want to be at. And it'll help you to have that confidence that your painting is gonna turn out pretty much, you know, in the way you envisioned it, at least in your composition, because you know the placement of all the things. Number eight is not necessarily a rule, at least in watercolor painting, 
but I'd say it's definitely present in the painting world. And that is to not sell yourself short. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about when you're pricing your artwork. And I've seen artists do this so often where they will, and they're just new in the world, they're putting out their Etsy shop or Shopify or whatever website they're using to sell their artwork, and they're placing these really high price tags on their art and they're not selling paintings. What I would encourage you to do is to start low. It's important to price your, your artwork similarly to the things you're seeing around you. For example, when I started my Etsy shop, I went on there, I did the research. This is me typing all the way, doing the research. I looked at similar paintings in my genre of artwork and was able to price my paintings around that range. If you price it too high, people are, you know, people are gonna be like, um, all right, this person thinks very highly of themselves. The idea is like, if your name is out there, it's easier to you know sell your artwork. If you price it too low, people are gonna think maybe it doesn't have enough value. So in that mid range is helpful. And I don't think this is selling yourself short. I think that you know our artwork is valuable and we should be compensated for that by people who appreciate the artwork, but we have to start somewhere. And here's the other piece of it too. I encourage you to do some pro bono work as well. It's not meaning that your paintings don't have value. It's you're starting off somewhere. When you put a painting into someone else's home, it's a gift for a friend or family. Maybe you do a giveaway on social media. It's getting your name out there, your work out there. That person is more likely to want to go back to your shop and purchase in the future, not only because they received a free gift, but because they know your work. Other people have come to their home and have complimented it. It. they've been able to tell them about you and it's just a really nice way to balance out this stressful feeling or need to be able to sell our work as well as wanting other people to know about who we are so those were the eight things I wanted to share with you guys today um, again remembering that rules are there those are parameters that help us feel safe that understand if I do this, this is the outcome I'm going to most likely receive. And it gives us a sense of encouragement and confidence because we are learning things and we're understanding how things work. So the rules are there to teach us, to guide us, but they're also there for us to be able to say, hey, how's it going? I'm glad you're over there. I'm gonna do my thing over here. I'm going to step outside of the box now that I've learned what I can and cannot do. And I'm going to work on what works for me, what I feel comfortable with and express myself freely. Guys, I want you more than anything to be able to learn to paint without anxiety, without fear, without stress, without worry, so that this medium can be something that encourages you so that you can do something for yourself, the self-care piece to make you into an individual that is healthy, that is happy, that is able to take all that information out to the world to create a, a lovely space where other people can be encouraged and feel happy when they come in contact with you and your artwork. So guys, remember that there is another video that I did part part one, wow, just one finger, and that is linked below the 12 things I wish I knew when I first started watercolor painting. Also, I teach watercolor on Patreon. It's a great way to support what I do as well as receive bonus content such as exclusive tutorials. You can even get art prints, live stream with me and so much more. That's also linked in the description. I think that's all the things. Um, thank you for being here. I appreciate you all and I'll see you soon on the next video. Happy painting, happy mental health and talk to you soon. Bye.